Historically, most people across the world were illiterate, unable to read their own religious texts and therefore relying on scholars, imams, rabbis, priests, and monks for understanding. These religious leaders often use religion as a means of livelihood, sometimes disregarding accuracy. In this discussion, we focus on Islam and Muslims specifically. For centuries, Muslims have relied on scholars and imams who have unfortunately translated or interpreted many Quranic verses inaccurately, whether due to lack of knowledge or a disregard for the consequences. Here, we delve into one controversial verse of the Quran, chapter 5, verse 38, which reads, As for the thief, male or female, cut off the hands of both. This is a recompense for what they have done and an exemplary punishment from Allah. Allah is almighty, all-wise. Translating this verse literally poses issues, as the Arabic term used does not specify a severe cut. In Arabic, cuts can be either severe or soft. For example, just a few verses earlier in 533, the word for cut includes an emphatic sign called a shada, denoting a severe cut, which is missing in 538. This means that a literal translation is likely incorrect. So, can we merely translate this verse literally? In Quran 3 colon 7, we learn that the Quran contains both precise and unspecific verses. Only Allah and those firmly grounded in knowledge understand the true interpretation of unspecific verses. How do those of firm knowledge interpret these verses? Not by communicating directly with God, but by understanding the Quran as a whole. Is 538 precise or unspecific? A precise verse is clear in its meaning, while an unspecific verse is conditional and requires interpretation. Verse 538 does not clarify how many hands should be cut, from which part, or for what amount of theft, making it ambiguous and therefore unspecific. Moreover, reading the following verse, 539, reveals more insight. But whoever repents after committing wrong and makes amends, Allah will graciously turn to him. Truly Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. For those who interpret 538 as advocating for the literal chopping off of hands, a question arises. If the thief repents, does God forgive them before or after the punishment? Extremist interpretations often claim forgiveness comes afterward, yet logically, forgiveness implies leniency, not retribution. For example, imagine you run a red light and an officer catches you. He takes your driver's license and issues a $1,000 ticket. Then you ask for forgiveness. What would you expect after you repent and ask for forgiveness? Naturally, you'd hope the officer either doesn't punish you at all or perhaps reduces a penalty, like returning your license and only issuing the ticket. So, how could God be described as truly all-forgiving, all-compassionate if hands are still to be cut off after a person has repented? Similarly, in 539, if Allah is all-forgiving, it suggests a call for compassion rather than punishment. Additionally, when we look at related verses, the true interpretation becomes clearer. Quran 16, 126, And if you punish an enemy, O believers, punish with an equivalent of that with which you are harmed. But if you are patient, it is better for those who are patient. In this verse, if we set aside the aspect of forgiveness and focus solely on punishment, then the punishment must be equivalent to the crime. To explore this concept, we might ask ChatGPT, an unbiased tool, about what an equivalent punishment would be for someone who steals an iPhone. ChatGPT operates without belief or bias, which can sometimes influence human judgment. So, if we were to ask ChatGPT, in a legal system where punishment must be proportional to the crime, what would be an appropriate punishment for stealing an iPhone? If a country's legal framework requires that punishment be equivalent to the harm caused, a judge would aim to match the penalty to the value of the stolen item, in this case an iPhone, and possibly the broader impact on the victim. Here's a reasonable approach. 1. Restitution. The thief could be ordered to repay the victim for the value of the iPhone, either by providing a replacement or by compensating them with its market value. Restitution directly addresses the material loss and aims to make the victim whole. 2. Additional penalty. To discourage future theft, the judge might impose a penalty that matches the level of harm. 
Since an iPhone is a valuable non-essential item, the punishment could include a fine or community service hours equivalent to the theft's seriousness but not overly harsh. For instance, a certain number of community service hours may be assigned, reflecting the value of the item and inconvenience caused. 3. Educational or Rehabilitative Measures If theft resulted from economic hardship or other underlying factors, requiring the thief to attend workshops or counseling could also be included to prevent future offenses. 4. Probation In cases involving minor theft like a single item, probation might be appropriate, with certain conditions to ensure the person doesn't re-offend. ChatGPT's response aligns closely with the principles of proportional punishment, even if we set aside the Quran's call to forgive. But what does 538 actually convey? When examining the Quran, we find that the word hand appears 120 times and cut appears 34 times. Are these terms always used in a literal physical sense, or can they be metaphorical as well? In fact, both hand and cut are used in both literal and metaphorical contexts throughout the Quran. Quran 5 hours 64 minutes. The Jew said, all his hands are tied. It is their own hands that are tied. Here, hands symbolizes power. Quran 48 colon 10. God's hand is placed over theirs, where hand signifies support and power. Quran 2 colon 195. Let not your own hands throw you into destruction. In this context, hands represents deeds. Cut can also have a metaphorical meaning, as seen in Quran 2 colon 166. Cut off from them are the ties of relationship. Here, cut indicates the severing of relationships. Quran 2 27. Those who cut God's covenant after it is confirmed. Here, it refers to breaking agreements. Why? Then, do some insist on interpreting 538 literally as chopping off hands. Often, they haven't thoroughly examined the Quran's context. Interestingly, in Quran 1231, the same Arabic term for cut is used, yet here, translators interpret it as cutting their hands in a non-severe manner, since it wouldn't make sense in the context of women peeling fruit. The true interpretation is that they stop gossiping severely because of their astonishment. This reinforces the notion that context is crucial. Furthermore, Theft in the Quran is not limited to stealing physical items, but also includes stealing information, as noted in Quran 15.18, except one who steals a hearing and is pursued by a clear burning flame. Would it make sense to chop off ears for stealing information? Clearly, this is metaphorical. A better translation of 538 would be, restrain them and rehabilitate them. If they repent after rehabilitation, forgive them, for Allah is all-forgiving and all-compassionate. God encourages us to rehabilitate and guide rather than simply punish, thereby addressing the root causes of wrongful actions. The wise words of Ali to his governor in Egypt reinforced this approach. Malik, the worst people for you must be those who try to reveal people's mistakes and sins. People make mistakes, and the governor's role is to address the issues leading people to misdeeds. Judging others is God's right not yours. Cover people's mistakes and sins so that God may cover yours. I hope this clarifies the true interpretation of Quran 538.